Oh, Dea, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it is thank so you much for having fun. Me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Honestly, mm -hmm. Dangerous Waters is so much fun. Um, it is intense and it is sort of crazy and goes all sorts of different ways. It, you know, where it, there is, there's a point in the film where I think it's going one way and it goes completely the opposite. Yeah. Um, what was it that made you want to be a part of the film? Um, initially, before I even read the script, um, the agent called me and just told me that there's a movie with Ray Liotta and Eric Dane. So immediately I was already excited because I just, I grew up on Ray's movies. Um, he's such a legend. And, um, and then Eric, I was actually his episode of Euphoria, the one, I think everyone knows that one, the one that he's, he's really the center of had just come out. And I was actually just talking to my friends about how incredible he is and how incredible he was in that. And I was like, this is so odd, like that this kind of opportunity is just coming up like this. So initially I was just excited just from the people involved and I read the script um, and I really, really loved the script. I was just terrified. You know, I'd never done an action movie. Um, I've done an action movie before, but not, not where one where I had to do any action. Um, it was filming in the Dominican Republic. It just seemed like a very, you know, big undertaking. So I just was like, okay, this is, but I also have to do this. It just felt like something um, that I, that I couldn't say no to. Well, I, I see why. And, and actually I'm glad you brought up, I mean, Eric's so much fun in this, you know, yeah. just everything, everything's with a snarl, even in, even in the moments where he's a nice guy, it's sort of, there's that, that edge to him. Right. Um, but I, I, I wanted to ask you about Ray. I didn't realize he was in the film and then he shows up. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, because I know he passed away. What was it like working with, with him, even in the, the brief time that he's in the film? So even in that brief time, um, we basically took all, all day to um, to film that, just that one scene. Um, you know, we had, we were, we had been filming for a while and we knew like Ray is coming, Ray is coming, you know, he's legendary and we just wanted to make sure everything was perfect. So we spent the first half of the day shooting every, all of his coverage and then we spun around to me and Ray actually gave me more on my coverage than he gave himself. And I was like, wow, this guy is such a class act. He's so generous. Um, he cares so much. And I think that's something that I will always take away from him is, is just how much he cared, you know, even at his level and playing, coming in and playing a small role and playing with me, you know, I just, I, so it's just, I, th I think that's what I'll always remember him as, as someone that, that gave me so much and was incredibly generous. You know, I, I like that you're saying that just because he's one, he seems like one of those guys. And I've certainly, I, I, of course, never had the chance to meet with him, but, but I mean, um, whenever he's in a project, he just elevates the project that much more. And, and just, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it was fun to have him a part of this as well. Um, yeah, it was, he really elevated this project and so was so, so grateful for that, that I got those moments with him. Absolutely. Uh, this is a very physical film. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what was that? I, I'm not, you know, I, have you done anything like this before? Is this, and, and what sort of training did you have to go through? Because this is the, like your character goes through a lot in this particular story. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of training. I'd never done anything like this before. Um, I did Krav Maga. I did, you know, just, we just, um, we also just did like some uh, combat training just to get my body moving. I did tactical training, you know, gun training. Um, and then we worked on the stunts a lot, you know, from, for months we were, we were working on the stunts that I had, that I did. Um, you know, some of them change on the go, but it is like a dance rehearsal. You do have to, you know, and, and the, our stunt coordinator kind of um, put in stunts for me that, of things that I was stronger at. Um, so um, that's, you know, there, there was a lot of physical training and it was very new to me. Um, and I did not even know if I was going to like it. I didn't think I would like it or even be good at it. And my first time in the shooting range, I was like, wow, okay, I'm a good shot. And then um, the, after that, um, when when I was filming the scenes, I was like, I didn't I didn't realize I would have this much fun doing an action movie. 
right? It's not some, it wasn't some big goal of mine. It wasn't something that I was dying to do, but I just didn't realize I really fell in love with it. It was so enjoyable. The adrenaline you get from it. Um, you know, the more you practice a, st a stunt, the, the better you get at it. And I really like dancing. So for me, it was kind of, kind of like that, where I get to do, you know, you get to do this kind of, uh, routine and you get to perfect the routine. Um, so for me, it was really, really fun. Was there some, was there some aspect of that that you liked more than, or was particularly more challenging than the other ones? Because there's, there, like I said, there's a lot of things you, you're doing the gun training on this, you're, you're taking the falls, you're, you like you said, was there something that really jumped out at you? Wow. You know what I was so afraid of was they cut this out, but I had to dive from uh, the top of the ship. They cut that out? <laughs> Yeah, they cut that out. It's it's a part of a dream sequence. I oh, go okay. all the way to the end of the boat, and then I now I think that it's just me waking up in the in the ocean. But for me, st so when you have like one or two chances to do something, we had like three cameras set up. It was the end of the day, and the entire crew is watching me. And if I flop, I ruin everyone's. Everyone wants to go home. So that to me, that was that. There's a lot of pressure. It was a perfect dive, thank God. And my double did it as well. My stunt double, Sonia, was amazing. Um, and the stunt coordinator was like, I really liked your dive. I was like, okay, you know, um, <laughs> they, they just, so thank God, because if I, you know what I mean? It's, it's things like that when you have one take of something. To me, that's what's extremely difficult because of the, the pressure that is put on you because it's, it reflects on, you know, on everybody, the entire yeah, I I'm gets sorry. affected by your performance <laughs> yeah absolutely like uh, you, uh, those ones where you it's one and done must be more terrifying than the rest so terrifying so terrifying oh i believe it yeah. uh, your your character in this film like i said she goes through a lot mm -hmm. um and there was this really fascinating conversation with eric in in the cave it's about halfway through the film and uh it's really interesting because we're hearing these two perspectives of these characters and Eric is, you know, a former cop and he's, he's sharing his story. And at one point uh, he talks about the only way to win is to play dirty. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered, you know, as somebody, as somebody who is young at the start out of uh, starting out on her career, you know, looking towards your future, what do you think it takes to fight for that future? Because we see this character sort of broken by it. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean to you to look forward? What does it take to to get beyond that so you don't fall into that trap? I think it takes a lot of patience. And I've learned that through COVID, through the strike. The strike is difficult. And, you know, I as someone that I, I have been doing this for a minute. Um, so it is, you do, you do have to sit with a lot of decisions. You do have to pass on a lot of things. And, and then you sit there with those decisions of like, oh, that movie just came out that I passed on or, or, you know, maybe if I did this, I, you know, sometimes I, I, I take waiting at home for the better thing than, than to work. And that's kind of crazy. So for me, I think that the, the best advice I would give or my just my perspective on this is patience because a lot of the times that I, I pass on something um a few months later sometimes even a few weeks later an offer that is way better comes or way more aligned with me comes around so I would say to to be patient and we're in a weird time the strike just ended sort of we had COVID which changed everybody's career and changed everybody's trajectory streaming changed everybody's trajectory um the influence of social media also changed this industry so the the industry is, is changing and i think a lot of actors are um you know looking at their careers as like okay this isn't the the opportunities that come around aren't exactly what i had imagined for myself from a young age because of how different the industry is these days so i would just say to be patient and know that those opportunities that you dream of your whole life are, are still coming around. You just have to, you have to be patient and trust your gut. That is hard to do. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard to do, but you have to listen to your gut. And when something doesn't feel right, no matter how much money it is, it's, you have to just 
be really patient and know that and, and trust that voice and know that the things that might not seem like they'll pay off later will will always pay off later. So what is it that you look for in a in a story then, Odeo? What is it what is the thing that you say, this is one that I don't want to pass on? Um, I look at the script, I look at the writing. That's very important to me because you can't make a good movie out of a bad script. Yeah. You could definitely make a bad movie out of a good script, but you know, <laughs> if the script isn't good, there's no chance. There's no chance. You want to look at I look at the film and I look at the filmmakers and I don't really care too much actually about the size of the role. I'm I've been a part of Lady Bird and Cha Cha Real Smooth where I wasn't the lead role, but I knew I wanted to work with those filmmakers and I'm incredibly proud of my work and kind of like Philip Seymour Hoffman had this trajectory of taking small roles in really, really incredible um, projects and he made the most out of those roles. So for me, what I care about most is the the story and the filmmakers. I think that's why it's good. It, that's really funny because you're absolutely right. You can have a good script and not have a great end product, which seems yeah. counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so important to have that, that baseline, mm -hmm. um, as you're moving forward, hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, thinking back to this project here, um, I was wondering, what is it that you hope people take away from dangerous waters? What is it you hope oh, the type of experience that you hope they have? Hope is inspiring. Um, especially for young women. I hope they see themselves in Rose. And um, I hope that also that just people take away Ray's last performance, that people mm -hmm. give, give him his flowers and give him that last moment. I think it's a beautiful performance. And then also, you know, everybody who worked with him can't say enough good things about him. And we, we take such, like, for me, it's just a special memory that, that I got to work with, with Ray. Um, yeah, and that, that it's, that it's motivating and, and inspiring um, and that people get strength uh, through Rose. You know, actually, I, I'm glad you said that because that actually reminds me of a question I wanted to ask you because her character has a real fire to her. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting to hold her up with her mother. Like her mother is sort of, you know, uh, Eric's character, forgive me, I can't think of his name. Makes Eric. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And he's Derek. Derek. Okay, so yeah. Eric's character's name is Derek. But yeah, I always thought it'd be funny if his name was Derek Ain. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we have to make his last name Ain. <laughs> so funny. That would have been amazing. Um, yeah, I know. But but it's interesting because the care the the woman playing your mother, like Derek, makes these comments. Oh, he's just making conversation. He wanted to know where I was headed, looking this good. And and there's this moment your character looks at her and it's just sort of like sad, like that because this almost this belittling mm -hmm. of your mother's character. But I, I was wondering, can you tell us a little bit about Rose and what it is that that really draws you to her? How do you connect with her? Because there's a real strength within her. There's a real strength and there's she's um she's very intuitive mm -hmm. and she picks up on a lot of things that her mom can't pick up on. And I think she has a really interesting relationship with her mom because Rose is a teenager right she's still 19 and she has a mom that she doesn't agree with on a lot of things but I love that it, she still just really wants to protect her mom and it's still a really loving relationship between her and her mom she doesn't judge her mom she tries to see all the good parts in her and she tries to use her protective senses that she inherited from her dad to, to protect her mom because that they're they're a partnership and I really like how much she sticks up for her in a way that's not like, mom, you know, like that, that's what I, I love about Rose um, and about their dynamic is that she could have been a very annoyed teenager that, you know, just doesn't under, can't see her mom. But Rose is so smart and so empathetic that she can see why her mom is doing the things she's doing. She can see it comes from insecurity or from wanting to you know, have a, a good future for them. The reason her mom is doing this trip is because it's not just because of love and that she's selfish. She, she also wants, hopefully, Derek to save them. Her mom's always looking for a savior, you know? So um, for me, it was just, I guess, I don't know. Did I answer your question about their dynamic? And oh, for sure. Okay, Absolutely. okay. 
<laughs> and, and actually, I love what you said there because I hadn't thought of it from that angle. That her mom's always looking for a savior, and Rose looks within. Right. You know, she knows this... that she can save herself. Yeah, yeah, and it, I mean, it's all of a sudden you just see this switch go within her character at the beginning of the film. Like she's frustrated. She's you know she's got that teen angst, but. As the film's going on, like you just see, like she's just coming alive and taking responsibility and saying no, no more. Right. This is, it's it's yeah. pretty, pretty great. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it was all about survival and her having to to survive out there. And then the minute she sees those girls, it it all switches over and her her yeah. purpose in life changes, and she knows she has to save those girls. And that that was a really great motivation for me to play off of. I thought that was really important that it's not just about herself anymore. Yes, and that that's one of the things I, I I sense with this film is that there is that sort of sense of justice of taking taking responsibility even for 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 others. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That actually adds a beautiful aspect to the film when when she meets the other girls because there's yeah. there's so much meaning in that moment. Yeah, uh, and you can see it matters to Rose. Yes, exactly. As well. Mm -hmm. That takes it above the the traditional action film. This isn't just a revenge flick. This is a a, a a justice flick in many ways. Yes, exactly. And we're also, you know, making a statement about human trafficking and and that this is a, this is a common thing. This is a thing that is happening in our day and age. Um, and I just love that we have females sticking together and looking out for each other, and how much, you know. The, I just I, I I love that this is ends up becoming Rose's purpose, and I can just see her, you know, in 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 the rest of her life, I can just see her continuing to to fight for justice for other people. I appreciate that so much, Odea. Thank you. You're you're wonderful. Thank you so oh, much. For likewise, I, I really enjoyed this. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that, and yeah. I wish you the best with the film. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thanks. We'll Have a great you. day. You too. Bye. Bye.